Hello everyone, in this tutorial what we'll be covering is the PHP require command and the require command is very similar to the include command but there is one difference. The main difference between the two is what exactly happens if we include or require a file that doesn't exist. So for an example, let's start with the include command first. As we saw from our previous tutorial, let's say I type in a file here that doesn't exist. We haven't created this file yet. So I'm, I'm going to type does not exist dot PHP. And below that, I'm going to write an echo and I'm going to say, hello, Robert. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to call it require dot PHP. Hit save. Then I'm going to go into my browser, go to localhost slash PHP basics and require.php. So as we can see here, we get this warning message or this error message. And then we see that it still went ahead and executed the echo command or the echo string. Hello, Robert. Now this can be a, a really big issue because let's say that we had some important data that was in this file does not exist that we needed for our PHP script. It's not really a good practice for this to continue to execute. So this is where the require command comes in. So instead of using include, what I'm going to type here is require. Very similar to the include. Only thing is it's called require instead of include. So you type require instead of include. So I'm going to hit save see what happens this time. All right. So again, here we get the same error message, but the biggest difference here is we can see that that hello Robert isn't shown here. So what it's doing is it's stopping the execution of this PHP script. Once it sees that it cannot find this does not exist PHP file. All right. So now hopefully it's clear what the main difference here is. But just to show you that the require command is very similar to the include command. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and create a file this time. I'm going to call it example.php. And I'm going to create that file. And we're going to type in it. Hello, Robert2. And I'm going to save this as example.php. All right, so now this file exists and I'm including it. So again, I'm gonna hit save here and I'm gonna load it up in my browser. And as we can see, we have hello Robert 2 and we have hello Robert. So again, it works exactly like that include command that we saw in the previous tutorial, but let's say we, again, recap in here, if we mistakenly named it incorrectly and I hit save and I loaded it up in my browser, we get that error message. But the main important concept here is that it doesn't continue to execute the rest of the PHP scripting block, such as hello, Robert. So hopefully now you understand why you will want to use the require command instead of the include command as its name itself should help you understand that it's required to have this file in order to continue on from this point. So that does conclude this tutorial. So definitely be sure to take the quiz online at the phpbasics.com to make sure you understand the basic concept between the require command and the include command. So I will see you in the next video.